And just as 140 Christians were massacred over Christ Christmas, and we know 52,000 in Africa since 2009 have been killed, now the Biden administration just this month decides to reverse that, and, and now the media and the State Department are saying it's climate change. Why would they want to downplay the conditions and the brutality against Christians? The United Kingdom's government put together a whole study. 365 million Christians are subject today in 2024 to high levels of persecution and discrimination. And that number is significant because compared to 2021, just a few years ago, that number was only 340 million. So year over year, we're watching tens of millions of more Christians being radically persecuted and discriminated against solely for the basis of our faith. Here to join us today on the stream and preview her event happening in just a couple of days in Washington, D.C., please join me in welcoming to the stream my beautiful friend, Gia Chacon. Christians are the most persecuted religious group in the world. One third of the world faces religious oppression and 80 percent of the oppressed are Christian. We are actually at an all time high of persecution. So for the past six years, Christian persecution has increased consistently every year, and we are now at the highest point in 30 years of persecution. In Nigeria, over 8,000 Christians were slaughtered in 2023. 8,000 Christians in one year were brutally massacred. And where is the world? Who is their voice? Who is talking about this? But interestingly, Isabel, and this is what we're really paying attention to right now, there is a severe uptick in persecution in South America. So Cuba, Nicaragua, Venezuela are all on the rise. Why do you think that is? I mean, I can make an educated guess in some of those countries. Mostly you're operating under totalitarian communism, so you have to worship the government and not God. But is that really the reason that this is all going on? There's two sides of it, right? So. The first thing is the reality that, yes, um, communist governments and tyrants, whether they're communists or if they're a dictator from Iran, for example, they see Christianity and the church as a threat to power. So if you can't control what's being said inside of the church, you can't control your people. And specifically, Christianity is seen as a big threat to these governments, more so um, than other religions. But we also can't deny the spiritual aspect of it. I mean, we know in scripture, it says we wrestle not against flesh and blood. Um, there mm -hmm. is this spiritual battle between light and darkness. And Jesus promised, if they hated me, they will hate you also. I've been thinking a lot lately about the rise of persecution in the West and how I don't know that we are quite prepared for it, particularly particularly because in the last several years, I've watched this dog eat dog, I'm right, you're wrong, I'm a real Christian, you're not a real Christian division happening in the American circles of Christianity that we operate in every day. And I'm watching people say, like, I as an individual am a real Christian and you're not, my denomination is real Christianity and yours isn't. And it's really seeming to heat up now in 2024 more than I ever anticipated. I, I see crazy, ridiculous posts on social media and comments on people's videos and all kinds of all, all kinds of ridiculous things. How do you react to the division of the Christian community in America? And do you think that makes it easier for persecution to come in the back door? When the church is divided, it is easier for uh, attacks to come in. You know, a house divided won't stand. But what we see is that when persecution comes, Christians have no choice but to be unified. They're not persecuting you because you're Catholic or you're Protestant or you're Orthodox or whatever it is. When ISIS, for example, comes into a Christian home, they're not there because of your denominational affiliation. They're there because you're lifting up the name of Jesus and because you profess Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. So at the end of the day, yes, theology matters. Yes, denomination matters. But when it comes to persecution, if you're a believer, if you follow Jesus, that is why you're being persecuted. So I think that the church in the United States needs to get with the program and focus on the main things and what's important. 
could not agree more, Gia. As we think about this word martyr, I'm really curious to get your perspective on the definition of that word. In my mind, I immediately think of the early, early church and people being crucified in ancient Rome or throughout the ancient Roman Empire. And it doesn't often feel like a modern connotation. And yet we know that there are martyrs all over the world experiencing this persecution today. What does that mean to you? If you're thinking of picking up your cross, what's at the end of picking up your cross and carrying it up to Calvary? Being crucified, laying down your life uh, to follow Jesus. So this mentality of comfortable Christianity, um, although I pray that we never have to physically lay down our life for Jesus, I, I really pray that that is never a reality for anyone. Um, but we should be ready and willing to sacrifice anything and everything to follow Jesus. And if we are willing to die for our Lord, which is easier said than done, and we pray for the grace to stay faithful, because it's only by God's grace that we could ever do that.